Welcome to TEC2. Hi, my name is Bill Bailey. I'm a hydronic specialist here at TEC since about 2004. Today what we want to talk about is how to right size a boiler. Probably most of you know almost all the boilers out in the world right now are oversized. That's not good for any piece of equipment. As we all know, equipment runs the best when it's off. It's most energy efficient. Runs also very well when it's always running. It's always on. It's in steady state efficiency. The worst is when it's cycling. That on-off, on-off cycle hurts any major piece of equipment, including boilers. So today we want to talk to you about how to right size that boiler for the customer to make sure you're giving him a high quality piece of equipment that will last a long time and perform the way it's supposed to be. So let's get into how do we right size this equipment. What's on a tag? Well, there's two numbers we're really concerned about. The first one being the input. On this boiler, the input's 100,000 BTUs. That's basically telling us how much gas this boiler can consume. The next number is the DOE heating capacity. This is just a calculation by the government that's basically stating that this boiler, the manufacturer claims is 83% efficient, times 100,000 BTUs, the DOE says the maximum output we can get out of this boiler is 83,000 BTUs. That's a usable number going to our radiators, baseboard, and whatever. The third number on here, and you'll see a lot of times, is what's called the IBR number. This is just a number from way back that basically compensated for uninsulated pipes in the basement, crawl space, or whatever. The biggest thing with looking at the tag is you are repeating the mistakes of the past. This is what we're talking about when boilers are oversized. So if you use this number, you're not right sizing that boiler for the customer or for yourself. Calculating baseboard. This is probably the easiest of all the heat emitters we're going to discuss today. All right, just need a few simple tools, tape measure, a flashlight, and for us older guys, a nice little mirror so we can look underneath the baseboard and see how much fin tube we actually have. The thing with baseboard is we're really not concerned about the length of the cover. Yes, it's there, it's part of the equation, but the true heat emitter in baseboard is the actual fin tube. This is what we really want to know. This is what we need for our calculation. Right? We might have 25, 26 feet of cover, but we only have 10 feet of fin tube. This is the calculation you want. You want to know this 10 feet. Those other 16 or 17 feet add very little to the calculation. So we want to know about this 10 feet of fin tube. On average, typical residential baseboard like this will give you 550 to 600 BTUs output. Right? When you start looking at larger stuff, more like commercial, you're going to be looking at a bigger fin. As you can see, that's a lot different from there. It's going to put out a lot more heat. Kicker is, it follows the same rule. We only want to know how much of this is in here to do our calculations. With the larger stuff, you want to look up the manufacturer and find out what their rated output per foot of fin is actually truly the calculation number you need. Calculating radiators. This always seems to be a little more mysterious, but it really isn't. We're going to need a couple measurements, and then we're going to go to a chart. This chart's been around for a long time, so the picture you're going to see is a little fuzzy, but radiators haven't changed that much. First thing we need to know is basically the height of the radiator. So to do that, simple tape measures, we're going from the bottom foot of the radiator to the top of the radiator. And this application is about 30 inches. The next thing we're going to be looking at and looking for is how many columns are on that radiator. In this application, we have three columns. Now we take that information, 30 inches high, by three columns, go to our chart, and the chart will tell us, let's say, number five in this application. That five refers to EDR, or equivalent direct radiation. What that really means is if you were to take this column, this piece here, and lay it out flat, you'd have five square feet of radiation. All right, so that's what this is going to give us. On this radiator, I'm going to have three sections. So now we take that five square feet, 
times the three sections, that means this radiator has 15 square feet of radiation. The chart will tell us that, and a common fact in the hydronic industry is each square foot will give you 170 BTUs output at 180 degree water temperature. These are all standards in the industry. So take out your little calculator, do a little math, you take that 170 times 15, and you'll find this radiator would put out a maximum of 2,550 BTUs per hour. That's all. Can't put out 3,000, it could only put out 2,550 at 180 degree water temperature. Do that to all the rest of the radiators in the building, add them all up. Now you know the total BTU loss, the BTU output, sorry about that, about, of all the radiators in that residence. Calculating radiant floor. This is probably the easiest of the different terminal units we're really talking about. In our cutaway here, we show you different spacing here. You don't have to worry about that when you're doing the calculations, okay? You gotta remember that no matter how tight we make the tube, the radiator is really the concrete. That's what's putting the heat out, that's the heat emitter. Typical concrete applications, residentially, about the max BTU you can get out per square foot of concrete, about 40 BTUs a square foot. So in our little mock-up here, we've got 24 square feet times 40, which means that this floor section here can put out 9,600 BTUs per hour. If this was a commercial building or a greenhouse, the max can really get is about 50 BTUs a square foot. So 50 times our 24 again, we're looking at about 12,000 BTUs is the max output from this radiant floor. Remember, it's not the tube, it's the concrete that is your true heat emitter here. Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully on your next boiler job, you will right size it. This will be more cost effective for you and your bid and more energy efficient for your customer in the long run. Thank you.